health officials say people infected with the E. coli bacteria may be unknowingly infecting others. More than 150 people have become ill after eating tainted hamburger meat at Jack in the Box restaurants in Idaho and Washington State. One child has died. Steve Williams reports. Jack in the Box, one of the most nostalgic fast food brands in all of America, consisting of over 3,700 locations, beating out other fast food powerhouses in terms of locations such as Burger King and Wendy's. And believe me, that's not the only accomplishment under the Jack in the Box brand. From their multiple iconic Super Bowl ad appearances, to their notably iconic mascot figure named Jack, who is in a circular box, I think it's clear, Jack in the Box has made quite the lasting impact on the United States food market at large. However, it's not always for the better. From their near bankruptcy, Jack in the Box almost faced in 1993, to the unfortunate tragic deaths involving multiple miners due to an outbreak of sheer magnitude raving across the United States. We discuss fast food's worst recall, and it probably should not have to be said, but viewer discretion is advised. Being founded on the day of February 21st of 1951 by a man named Robert Oscar Peterson. However, this was not Mr. Peterson's first endeavor into the fast food industry. Ten years before the release of Jack in the Box, Mr. Peterson would open up a fast food business called Topsy's in 1941, later renamed as Oscar's. Regardless, the first location of Topsy's slash Oscar's would be founded in San Diego, while the original location of Topsy slash Oscars is no longer there, 82 years ago, this location was the hotspot for the classic 1940s drive-in where everyone would hang out at, much like fast food brand Sonic. However, this would prove to be the precursor to even Sonic, due to Sonic not even being released 12 years later, and that was the reason why Robert Oscar Peterson's brand did so well compared to other fast food and restaurant competitors. He had such a revolutionary niche about what he would make as restaurants, it quickly became an overnight success, and going so far for Mr. Peterson to even claim he invented the idea of the drive through but this is still up for debate. However, what is clear, with all the success Mr. Peterson's brand was receiving, he would soon expand his brand ideas in 1951 to what is now known as Jack in the Box, and much like Oscars slash Topsies, it was a hit. And after years of slow and steady growth, from the years of 1951 to the late 1960s, he would have massive success all throughout the western side of the country, and come 1968, Jack in the Box would be brought out by a pet food company known as Purina. Now, hearing that, you might think, oh, that's kind of gross, and it kind of is. However, this would prove to be a major success boost for the Jack in the Box brand, because with this acquisition from Purina, they would have the ability to start expanding all throughout the eastern and southern parts of the country, and however, come the late 1970s, when by this point, 1,000 plus Jack in the Boxes were opened across the United States. However, this would soon hit a wall in terms of sales all throughout the eastern and southern part of the country, due to multiple reasons, such as a lack of name recognition in that part of the country, terrible restaurant locationing, too much extensioning with the Jack in the Box brand, etc, etc. So, with this setback the Jack in the Box brand suffered, they would sell off and tear down the vast majority of Jack in the Boxes all throughout the eastern and southern parts of the United States and started to double down in terms of advertising and restaurant openings all throughout the western part of the country due to their initial success in that part of the country. The Jack in the Box brand would also begin to do major rebranding on their image due to places like McDonald's, Burger King, Wendy's, etc. attempting to appeal to families. Jack in the Box would attempt to appeal to a more mature audience. What are you doing to the Jack in the Box clown? He's going bye-bye, lady. But he's so cute. Cute was the old Jack in the Box restaurants. Now we stand for great new food. Like our new Chicken Supreme, juicy all white meat chicken, two kinds of cheese on a toasted whole wheat bun. The food is better at the box. The food is better at the box. Waste them. The food is better at the box. Mr. Rick Pierce, Vice President of Monterey Jacks, formerly known as Jack in the Box. <clears throat> People ask me, why we changed our name from Jack in the Box to Monterey Jacks. Does that answer your question? Jack in the Box is now Monterey Jacks. We've taken fast food to a whole new place. So as entailed, the Jack in the Box brand would attempt to rebrand themselves so far as to change their name to Monetary Jacks. However, after a year of having this newly rebranded name, they would soon change it back to the red coating with white capped letters that they were known for having as their original symbol for, due to having a lack of popularity and catchiness that Monetary Jack's name was receiving. And soon following the 1980s into the 90s, the Jack in the Box brand was riding high with minimal problems along the way, where eventually in 1992, 
the Jack in the Box brand would have a public stock offering of over a quarter of a billion dollars that would all go towards the re-expansion of the Jack in the Box brand. However, following this potentially likely buyout and expansion of the Jack in the Box brand, tragedy would happen. Ladies and gentlemen, the moment is at hand. The Chief Justice of the United States, who will administer the presidential oath of office to William Jefferson Clinton. Chief Justice. And that court presided over by Bill Rehnquist could come in for some very dramatic changes in the administration of Bill Clinton. He is determined to put his stamp on the Supreme Court of the United States. Governor, are you ready to take the oath? I am. Will you please raise your right hand and repeat after me? I, William Jefferson Clinton, do solemnly swear. I, William Jefferson Clinton, do solemnly swear. That I will faithfully execute the office of President of the United States. That I will faithfully execute the office of President of the United States. And will to the best of my ability. And will to the best of my ability. Preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. Preserve protect and defend the Constitution of the United States. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. On the day of January 20th of 1993, as the 42nd President of the United States, William Jefferson Clinton was being inaugurated, a health crisis of sheer magnitude was happening all across the United States at the time that would result in the sickening of over 700 people and the tragic deaths of four children and this invisible killer to the eye would go down in history to be known as E. coli 0157-H7. The first incident date of the outbreak would occur on the day of December 24th of 1992, when on Christmas Eve, six-year-old Lauren Beth Rudolph, along with her family, would go to their local Southern California Jack in the Box to eat, and so they did. However, little did everyone know that six-year-old Lauren Rudolph had been infected with the E. coli 0157 bacterial virus. Following her trip to Jack in the Box in Christmas of 1992, everything was seemingly okay. However, a couple days following Christmas of 1992, Lauren Rudolph would be rushed to the hospital when experiencing multiple signs of worsening sickness related to the E. coli outbreak. Little did anyone know that it was E. coli that was killing Lauren Rudolph. And unfortunately, on the day of December 28th of 1992, the bacterial virus would get the best of Lauren Rudolph, where on that day, she would pass away. Unfortunately, this would only prove to be the first lethal case of the E. coli outbreak, and all throughout the western parts of the United States, in the states of California, Idaho, Washington, Nevada, were all getting similar reports of people getting sick in correlation with the similar way that Lauren Rudolph was sickened before she passed, such as a uh, fever, loss of appetite, mild to severe dehydration, nausea, and vomiting, and the list goes on and on and on with how many more symptoms by this point the 300 people had gotten sickened by. Only problem is, doctors and researchers were unable to identify a mass scale correlation between the people that were getting sick and where this possible outbreak was occurring. That was until the day of January 12th of 1993, over two weeks after the original outbreak occurred. And when this was discovered from the Washington State Department of Health, that HUS, a subvirus under the E. coli 0157 strain, was sickening Seattle area children, were soon following this. They would quickly link the strain to the E. coli 0157 bacterial virus, or eventually linking the E. coli 0157 bacterial virus to multiple jack-in-the-boxes all throughout the city of Seattle, Washington. And with this link of E. coli 0157, the jack-in-the-box brand was quickly correlated across multiple western states that jack-in-the-box locations were the epicenters of this extreme rise in E. coli 0157 reports all throughout the western part of the country. However, if it could not get any worse, it would soon be discovered that edible transmission was not the only way the E. coli 0157 virus was spreading. More and more cases continue to come into the Seattle King County Health Lab, which recorded its first big increase in E. coli 0157 cases back in December, weeks before the Jack in the Box epidemic was first discovered. 30 more suspected hospital samples arrived for confirmation in January. So far, these people have tested 74 cases, 66 of which were confirmed. That's six times the number expected in the entire state in a full year. The health department says all the news about Jack in the Box has caused us to lose sight of how easy the disease is transmitted from person to person. 
So it's particularly important to wash your hands after going to the toilet, after changing the diaper, uh, before handling food. Um, and uh, you especially want to you know, uh, be sure you wash your hands anytime you're handling any kind of raw meat. Meantime, Jack in the Box is running full-page ads in newspapers, offering condolences to victims and emphasizing the things it has done to guarantee safe burgers. We immediately decided to increase the cooking time of our hamburgers. In addition, we took the extraordinary step at that point and replaced all the hamburger patties in every restaurant in Washington and Idaho. Jack in the Box stock fell almost $4 a share and trading was suspended as the price went down to one of the lowest of the year Friday. Since then, the stock has bounced back. So as entailed, the Jack in the Box brand was taking extreme measures to limit and stop the spread of E. coli 0157, recalling and discarding the vast majority of their food products off of restaurant market. However, due to the spread of E. coli 0157 not even having to come from food directly, was someone who is just even infected with E. coli 0157 bacterial virus could infect others by just the air they breathe together. And unfortunately, this type of scenario would occur when two-year-old Riley Detweiler would be infected with the E. coli 0157 bacterial virus when at his daycare. Riley would come in contact with another student who was carrying the E. coli 0157 virus. Soon following this contact with E. coli 0157, Riley was showing serious signs of sickness, and soon following, Riley's parents would bring their child in for treatment. However, both Riley's parents and doctors were unable to do too much due to the overwhelmingness of E. coli 0157, where three weeks after being put into the hospital, two-year-old Riley Detweiler would pass away on the day of February 20th of 1993. Soon following this incident to the shock of the whole country of the death of two-year-old Riley Detweiler, the public wanted answers on how this could happen, and the truth would slowly start to unravel. To start, just replacing buns and ground beef and cooking meat to a higher temperature at longer periods of time was not the only solution to stopping E. coli 0157. It's clear there was a fundamental problem due to how in the first place these hamburgers were getting contaminated and it would be traced back to the place that the meat was coming from, the slaughterhouse. Health officials suspect the original source of contamination was at the slaughterhouse. Beef carcasses can become contaminated with dangerous bacteria falling off the production line into blood or feces on the floor. As entailed, health measures in multiple slaughterhouses across the United States were kept very unsanitary as you could keep a slaughterhouse clean, where in turn, a major dark side and unforeseen danger about the slaughter industry was discovered, along with outdated slaughter techniques for checking for contaminants, such as only seeing, poking, and sniffing whatever meat you are inspecting. It left out checking meat for the invisible killers in our food, such as E. coli, so with this major discovery, the USDA would step into this critically overlooked flaw in the United States slaughter and health regulation to in turn review and revise any loopholes or broken laws that these slaughterhouse plants were abusing or breaking. However, even with this awareness of E. coli 0157, reports of people getting extremely sick in connection with Jack in the Box was still occurring. However, thankfully, the last reported death in connection with E. coli 0157 was Riley Detweiler, so at least his unfortunate passing did not go in vain, because with this attention his passing had on the USA, people began to be more careful and take food procedure more seriously as a whole, from your everyday trip to the supermarket, to the newly revised health and safety measures that not just Jack in the Box, fast food restaurants, or even professional restaurants now do, but a health and safety code that all United States restaurants, big and small, would hear by, and is seemingly something people really take granted for in the modern day of the United States. But to tie up some loose ends, come March of 1993, the E. coli outbreak had been stopped due to a health stance from Jack in the Box, the USDA, and the public at large, and the over 700 victims that were all affected by the E. coli 0157 outbreak were all mostly handed out huge settlements ranging from the millions of dollars, such as 9-year-old Brianne Kiner, where along with her family won 15.6 millions of dollars after eating from Jack in the Box in Seattle, Washington, where days after, Brianne had gotten extremely sick. So on the day of January 13th of 1993, she was hospitalized, and after what was reported to be three strokes, bloody urine, kidney failure, 10,000 seizures, and multiple comas, she had pulled through, and on the day of February 24th of 1993, was able to return back home. And as for Jack in the Box, they had a major financial scare between 20 to 30 million dollars in losses in that part of the year alone, but where the true loss in profit was the trust and credibility factor that Jack in the Box lost. Because for years on end, following the E. coli 0157 outbreak, 
Jack in the Box was on the ropes in terms of if they would make it through this PR nightmare alive without their brand going bankrupt. However, as of 2023, the restaurant has still managed to get through this nightmare and as of 2023, are doing better than ever. So overall, the Jack in the Box recall of 1993 was a tragic event in US history that thankfully was only the biggest of its kind, and although its repercussions for the Jack in the Box brand, the over 700 people affected by it, and the health and safety standards that were not in use back then, without tragedies like these, we would not know in the modern day to use advanced techniques to keep all of our food, and most importantly ourselves safe. But with that, I hope you all have a great day.